Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Celeste and this is From Far Out. I am so excited to be back talking to you guys. Today we're going to talk about some energies for the new year. We're going to talk about why New Year's resolutions don't always work. We're going to talk about lucky girl syndrome. Um, but first and foremost, I am so glad that you are all here. I am, I hit my first 1000 subscribers. Yes. Over the holidays. Um, I was so excited. I had a lot of family visiting, so I haven't filmed in like almost a month, which is bananas to me but i am so excited to get started so i have four crystals that i want to share with you um we are going to start with a smudge as always i have some notes um yeah i'm so excited to chat with you all how was your holiday season um hopefully you had some like time off from work time off from social events in general i know the holiday season is supposed to be a break but we always plan huge social events and things happen all the time. So today I'm just bringing a little bit of cedar to open us up, open up the space to our spirit guides, to our energies, open up our minds, release some of our judgment, shut down our ego a little bit and just exist in consciousness. Um, right. So I've got my notes. Um, I have a couple of things that I want to bring to you. Um, if you are new to my channel, because there's so many of you that are, welcome. Um, in my videos, I don't always have like a, not, not a purpose, because I always have a purpose and intention when speaking in my videos, but I kind of just let spirit lead. Um, and a lot of my notes come from like meditations that I did, uh, you know, messages that I receive over time. And I sort of like, compile things in in what i would like to share i share about my own life my own traumas um healing in the way that i do um so if you are open to that let's get into it so firstly i want to say that i don't necessarily recognize the new year as like our new oh, also i cut my hair <laughs> a little new year tradition i always um get a big chop uh, on the new year every time i i'm always with my sister when i do it it's a thing Anyways, um, our hair is like very connected to our spirit and a renewal and a refresh is always very nice. That being said though, as I was just saying, I interrupt myself a lot. I don't always recognize the new year as like a fresh start, a new beginning. That kind of growth energy sort of comes in the spring for me in the equinox um, when the sun starts to come back. So this time right now, but, but I do recognize the power that the collective energy has behind saying new year, new start, fresh start, even like businesses and corporations and all of those things are recognizing the new year as a new year. So that does hold a lot of weight and that's a lot of energy that we can, you know, harness and use to our highest good. Um, so, so do what feels right, take what resonates, leave what doesn't as always. Um, but today I want to talk a little bit about relaxing in freshness and, you know, surrendering control of things. Um, New Year's resolutions often come with, you know, self-judgment. They come with, well, I'm not good at this, so I want to get good at this. And while it has that, like, good intention of wanting to improve yourself, it doesn't allow for a lot of self-compassion. And so that's what I would like to bring to the collective consciousness today. So first and foremost, um, lucky girl syndrome is one of the most amazing things to hit the collective consciousness in a while. Um, if you don't know what lucky girl syndrome is, it's, uh, I want to say like a trend on the internet, but it's, it's more than that. It's been like labeled, like the idea of the term lucky girl syndrome is a trend on the internet. Um, it's something that people are talking about, something that are, people are pushing forwards to, but the energy behind it and the intention behind it is ages, ages old. It really is just the basics of law of attraction. It is the basics of surrender and control, accepting divine grace, that kind of idea. And that's actually the last video that I made over a month ago. Um, I was talking about surrendering and just accepting the divine grace that is your birthright. You don't need to work towards a, a good life. You don't need to work towards the things you think you deserve. If you sit in this moment and you say, I am the luckiest girl in the world. I deserve all of these things. I deserve X, Y, and Z. Have an intention, but still being open and, and 
not um, like blinding yourself to all of these opportunities, but um, having your intention and just being open and saying, I deserve the world, I deserve the beautiful life, I deserve the highest good, it will come, it will arrive, it will show up, and you will be grateful for it. So the idea of lucky girl syndrome is recognizing multiple truths. It's recognizing that all things are true all at the same time. Things are always working in my favor all of the time. Even if I don't see it, even if it's hard to recognize in the moment, it is true and it is a fact. And the sooner that we can like digest that and enter that into our, our, our subconscious minds, the sooner that it will start to come true, the sooner that you will be able to recognize that this world was made for you to experience joy. All of the things that are happening in the world, all of the rules and the authorities and all those things, none of that matters because this world was created to experience joy. For all people, all of the time, but especially you, you are the most deserving person of a joyful, happy life. Now, does that mean that your that joyful, happy life is, you know, devoid of heartbreak and sadness and depression and all of these things? No, it doesn't. It th those things still exist, and the shadow work um, from our trauma and from our past selves, our our karmic um, ties, all of those things still have to be worked through. However, amidst all of that, and as much as all of that, there is a divine grace that only wants you to experience joy. So in opening our creative space to allow for divine guidance, I have a couple of crystals that I am taking into this new year. I am taking into this, um, this concept of surrendering to help me remember. Um, also, so I'm going to talk about the crystals, but I, I just want to have a very quick disclaimer. This is not a 101. I am not a like rule maker on crystals. I'm telling you my experience with the crystals, the energies that I pick up, the intentions that I've programmed some of these crystals with. Um, so so this, is, this is only to inspire some folks to maybe start your own journey in surrendering, um, get a little bit of uh, inspiration or tips from the things that I'm doing. But if it doesn't res resonate with you and you do not like the things that I'm saying about these crystals, if it's your favorite crystal and you don't feel like I'm speaking about it right, I apologize if your truth says it all exists at the same time. <laughs> okay, so the first one I'm going to talk about is Girasol. This one is so, so beautiful. I've had a, a piece of Girasol before and I ended up getting rid of it. I, I, I gave it to somebody and then this one, uh, do you see that like cool, um, when the light hits it, this whole thing right here is a rainbow. Um, then I ended up getting this one because one of my favorite crystal sellers was having a sale and this was from her personal collection and it just hits. This one just hits. I find that um, the scorpling shop, Sunny, a lot of the times sh she'll like get a bunch of crystals and then she'll like take one or two for her personal collection and then after a while release them. Um, and I always am so drawn to the ones that she's brought into her personal collection. Um, or like she'll have a bunch of me like, oh, this one's my favorite. And I'm like, no way, that's the one that I want. <laughs> um, love her. Anyways, so this is Girasol. And a couple of things that I wrote down in my notes are the idea of Girasol acting as a opening or a portal. So if you are somebody who often feels, fears, feels closed off out of fear, who like just shuts down in a moment um, and like is afraid of either feeling something or experiencing something, Girasol is going to open up that portal because that same portal that welcomes in difficult feelings is the one that welcomes in good feelings. You know what I mean? So you can't shut yourself off to one and expect to only feel the other. You know what I mean? So I allow myself to exist as air, transformative, fluid, powerful, ever-changing, capable of all things. When I did, you know, my little card reading um, <laughs> for the year of 2023, um, the one energy that kept coming forward was air magic. And I'm a Gemini, I'm an air sign, but I'm also a, uh, a Leo moon and rising. So I've much more um, identified with the energy of fire and that like passion and creativity, that like end all be all force that is fire energy. And I've sort of left my, um, 
I want to say quadrant because I identify a lot with the idea of the medicine wheel and the elements and things like that. So I've left that quadrant of air sort of unnoticed, untouched, um, and I've never really connected with air. But girasol, I know actually, girasol, um, I believe is the Italian word or Sicilian word um, for sunflower. Um, so a lot of people connect girasol with more... Um, like watery energy? I don't know. I don't know what people use Girasol for. I've never seen anybody use Girasol. I'm not even gonna lie. I've only seen it on like Instagram a handful of times. But for me, it is my air energy. So this is propelling me forwards with the help of pyrite. Oh, there she is. Oh, I love pyrite. Isn't it a beautiful mirror? Um, pyrite is a reflection. Everything that you put out into the world is going to come back to you. And that uh, that that grounding forward force is propelled by um pyrite so using these two in a meditation a couple of ideas that i got um is is this this girasol acting as like a protective force to only allow like to filter and only allow um the highest good the whitest light you know the um the intention that we've set forward and the intention that you programmed years with, because it's a quartz, um, it is very, very programmable. It is very easily, um, it's very easily intended. Like you can put an intention in it and you will notice the difference of like working with it without intention and working with it with intention. Um, Yes, protective force for the greatest good, an egg of fertile energy transformed by pyrite's push. Now, I don't mean that if you work with your soul, you're going to get pregnant. My husband and I, we're trying to have a third baby when the kids turn two. Um, so we shall see what happens in 2023 for me particularly. But the idea of having a fertile energy transformed and propelled forward by a um, masculine grounding energy is not necessarily having a baby, but it is the idea of creation. It's the idea of a new life for yourself, a new um, way forward, a new experience around you, whether it's, you know, starting a business, any kind of goal that you have. Um, these two in conjunction are really, really good for creating a fertile energy, having the intention and having it reflected out into the world around you. Lucky girl syndrome all day. In set your dear soul, quartz, whatever you choose to use, set your crystal with the intention of, I am the luckiest girl in the world. I deserve, outside of gender, I'm the luckiest person in the entire world. I deserve all of the most beautiful things around me. Have it propelled forward by this reflective energy, this incredibly abundant energy, and you are going to change your life. You are going to change your experience. I promise you, but it's all about the intention you set. And next up, the next crystal that I want to talk about this has a lot to do with the new year and our new intentions. So this is sulfur quartz. It is so, so, so gorgeous. So you can see most of the sulfur in like this piece here where it's yellowy. And then this piece here that's clear and has a little bit of orangey iron in it. It's really, really beautiful. So sulfur quartz is all about clarity. So clarity of intention, clarity of um, uh, like removing disillusion. Um, if you are having blockages in your own experiences, so if you're feeling like guilt about a certain thing and you're having difficulties like truly believing that you deserve the grace that is your birthright, um, if you're having like, you know, imposter syndrome is something that I, I experience so, 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 so much. Sulfur quartz is when programmed with the intention to do so, um, it is going to help you clear all of those things that are just not propelling you forward. All of the things that um, are being filtered through the girasol that are being held back from you um, outside of what is the greatest good, you're going to clear that entire force field, your aura, your space, your existence with your sulfur quartz. Um, sulfur quartz is like literally, it, it's... If you, if you have a space in your house that you like get kind of weird vibes from, or maybe, you know, you recently had a, an argument or something happened that was like really emotionally intense in a space, in a room, um, or, you know, you, you broke up with somebody and you're still feeling that sort of like bogged downness, having sulfur, sulfur quartz, oh my goodness, having sulfur quartz in any space is going to cleanse and refresh that energy. And being in this time, you know, before spring, before the new seeds are planted, but 
in the new year where you're like expected by society to start something new, sulfur quartz is the greatest for this time because it's, it is a relaxation and freshness. It is the end of a binging and purging cycle, the end of an addictive cycle. It is just accepting yourself in the clearest and freshest state. And, and binging and purging, actually, I'd like to get into that for a quick moment. The idea of binging and purging is the idea of addiction. And I know that for me, I struggle with addictions. I struggle with shopping addiction. I struggle with a food addiction. Um, so that's really all I can speak on. If you struggle with a different kind of addiction, you may find some inspiration from this, but I don't mean to speak on your experience. But for me, the idea of binging and purging when it comes to shopping is like binge buying, you know, doing all these crazy hauls, spending hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And then in a few months, I go, well, I have too much stuff. So I have to like purge my closet. I have to declutter my makeup collection. I have to declutter my crystals, like all of the things. And then I'm stuck in this empty zone of like, I'm missing this. I'm missing that. I'm not used to not being surrounded by things. So I buy, I buy, I buy. And it just, it continues that cycle. So bringing in sulfur quartz is is going to be a refresh to that cycle um understanding that when we do declutter our things which is helpful and and, and a good time to do it right now um, when we do declutter our things and we open our space we can just relax in that freshness not every shelf has to have something on it not every wall has to hang something um you know, we, we don't need a million things in our life. For me, that's my experience with, with shopping. And the same thing with food. A lot of people at this time are doing diets and going to the gym and, and well, you know, like conscious consumption of food and, and obviously exercising and moving your body is incredibly important. It's, it, you, it's also that swing pendulum of like super restrictive diets, super heavy working out. And then you go into binging of, I don't care anymore. It's not sustainable. I can't do it. I'm just gonna eat until I die. And then we just go back and forth with this restrictive and um, and binging energy. And then bringing the sulfur cords in to sort of balance out that swinging pendulum and understand that like some days I'm going to eat more calories than I want to. And some days I'm going to really kill it in the gym. And that's just how it's going to be. This is, you know, the balance of my life. I don't exist in these extremities all the time. There is a center, you know. Right, so on that note, um, the final crystal that I wanna to talk to you about that I'm bringing in the new year with me, I'm sure you all recognize this beautiful stone. This is rose quartz. I like to use rose quartz when I have goals, when I have intentions, when I have purpose, because rose quartz is all about self-compassion and lack of judgment on the self. And when we set goals, sometimes it, like I said in the beginning, it comes from a place of self-judgment. Um, so the idea of having rose quartz connected to our intention will remove the idea of I'm bad right now, so I need to fix it. That's not what a goal is meant to do. A goal is meant to say, I'm existing in this place right now. And I want to exist in this place. So I'm going to move to that place. I'm going to do the things I need to do to get into this place. But when we keep our rose quartz with us, it reminds us that the place that we are right now is not bad. We are not bad people. We are not losers or lame or fat or ugly or whatever. Whatever it is that you think that you are, you are not. Um, so releasing that self-judgment, releasing the idea of if I don't meet my goal, I'm a loser, I'm a failure. Releasing the idea that the place that I am now is not good enough. Lucky girl syndrome, you are good enough in this moment. Not in 10 minutes when you have your coffee and you're in a better mood. Not in five years when your business is booming and everything's perfect. You are good and perfect and amazing and the luckiest person in the world right here and right now. So with all of that, I will leave you with the idea that in the spring, the seeds will come, new growth will arrive. But for now, let's just relax in this fresh state, in our clarity, and we will propel forward when the time is right. So thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you in the next one. Peace and love from far out.